Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. Today we're starting off with the end of the last video where I spent the day with Mr. Ed and I came home to catch swarms. After that we'll get into some pulling some queens. That's what I put on the video. And then maybe some educational. I've got some video for uh, uses of propolis. We'll put that on the end. So that's what's going on in this one today. Somebody call it. They settling down for the evening. One flying in. trees here you really can't shake them off the base of the tree is so thick and hard and they don't shake well you can shake you can knock them off to some degree but vacuum them just quick and easy and then you don't have to spend two hours waiting on them all to settle down on the box or walk in your equipment i've got the equipment set up over there already ready to receive them and as soon as I get them all sucked up, I will put a jacket and a hood on because once they've been through the vac, unless you've got time to let them settle down, they're not your friend anymore. If you do this with no suit on, when you get ready to dump them, I suggest you suit up. Now I had that vac running on high when I was sucking big clusters, but turning it down to go to the back nozzle. So I can get up in all these little branches. I don't want to kill them. You suck big clumps in like that with it wide open. <clears throat> they seem to do okay. So if you run it wide open with the nozzle on it, you tend to injure a whole lot of them. And when you hit it, it's usually either a drone stuck in the pipe or a bee crossways in the pipe. I got this one and one more to go get. This is this is the bigger of the two. I want to go ahead and get it right now. So I can still see what I'm doing. The other one looks like it's going to be an easier, uh, just a quick, uh, well, I'm not shaking because I don't have a nuke box with me. Quick back, it would be a quick shake on the other one, I think. While I'm catching this, Mr. Ed's probably getting ready for bed right now. Bunch of little twigs up in there. Kind of looks like a leftovers of a bird nest. I have vacuumed them out of a bird nest before. I'm going to probably leave this running real time just so y'all can see about how long it takes to vacuum a swarm out of a whole lot of tiny branches. Almost. 
Oh, <laughs> nice. Two hives. Two colonies. Oh, dude. Possibly two three. Yeah, it's three right there. Yeah, that's up. Oh, we got to take all this. They have chewed this insulation up. That's not chewed. Look. Something chewed it up. No. A little bit, but look. Yeah, look on this side. They put it the wrong good. insulation in. <laughs> Ooh, dog. No battens, but look at all this insulation hanging. But look, they chewed it all off. Yeah, that one I got. They chewed all that off. That's full of wax. That's where the sawdust looking stuff was coming out yeah. when we first did it. Good wax, Lord. Man. You think they wanted the plywood to stay up? Here we go. We could take them out from under it, but I think it'd be easier just to pull it down. Yeah, that's because you were over there with the camera. In Don't here. sling it in the elbow and hit me. <laughs> Is it big? The amount of these are. And then I gotta come past the cone. Which is gonna cause a problem. <laughs> oh! Uh, shoot! <laughs> Let me help you out. Beep! Yeah, it's not a lot of cone, but it's a lot of bees. Yeah, the bee accounts up high catching, than the cone count. Catching them early. Settled in. Okay, we got the queen in here somewhere. I just saw her. Looks like she's in the clouds. Where is she? Come on, girl. She's a, she was a dark one. Dark ones are a little bit harder to find. Didn't you see her? I thought I saw. There she is. There she is. Yep, underneath. I knew I saw her. Uh, come on. Heading north. She keeps running under the bees. I can't get them. Look like she just stung you. <laughs> I don't even know where she went. Come on. There's a scene. She was be northeast. She's here somewhere. I know I saw her. Why am I missing her now? You see her? Not yet. She don't slow down. There she is. There she is. She's constantly running underneath of them. Yep, now I got her in sights. I think she turned around to bite oh, you. Oh, oh. Did I drop her? No, here she is, here she is. I think. I might have dropped her. Keep looking. Even I could spot her if she was on the ground. Come on. Yeah. They're moving, I should be able to spot her. Right, I'm trying to look up the movement. Is that her? No, it's not her. Mm -mm. Bet you I dropped her. Yeah, she would be right underneath us when you dropped her. Or at least underneath the boot or something. Uh, I want to find a mosquito on you so bad right now. <laughs> so you can slap me? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know if you see her. Because she could have went anywhere in a distance. If she hit that grass, we're messed. Because she went back up. She could have went back up. Oh, there she is, there she is, there she is. Right down low. Yep. Oh, here's, uh, oh, I don't want to drop her again. I already dropped her one time and thought I lost her. She flew back up. Oh, um, come on. She's there's no mosquitoes for me to slap him about. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to slap me because I dropped her. Come on. Uh, I'm going to have to cover her up. She's not getting out so I can grab her. She flew again. <laughs> she, oh, where? Oh, no, she flew again. I'm going to have to wait on her to land again. She's got to be a young queen. That's the second time she flew off on us. Well, I felt something hit me. Golly, man. Make sure she ain't on me. She's good. She's good. She's escaped us twice now. I grabbed her off that insulation. Which she might have went back to. And uh, she went airborne. And then she went airborne on me again, so... Where did she go? Here, so hopefully she goes right back up here. 
Oh, she came back. She came back. She came back. All right, I gotta grab her. My hands are shaking. Uh, too yes. much caffeine. Dang it! I just got stung in the shoulder. Not enough. Take it like a man. <laughs> All right, there's. Yes. There's the queen. She's gotten away from me twice now. All right, we got the queen and one worker. And I'll go show the customer. I don't know if the customer wants to be on. You mean line up, be in line up, be on camera? Well, you can say no. I'll take the camera away. <laughs> well, we'll do it this way. Here. Your feet are on the camera. That's her. You see how big her butt is compared to those others? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. She said, let me out of here. Oh, yeah. Well, she got away from him twice. So it's usually just one queen? This has got to be the remains of a bird nest. It's just a bunch of twigs and stuff up in this crook. Up in the crook of this tree. They normally, I would have had them by now normally if they hadn't have been up in all this stuff. About all I can get there. There's maybe a few dozen running around up in here. side right above my belt taking a stinger out I know at least there's one right there got in the truck on me 
I know I brought a couple in here with me. Well, let's um, see what color it is outside. It's the color of sunset. I am now going to pick up my next swarm. I've dumped those. They're in a, I dumped them in a dump box and then put a box of frames with fresh wax on the foundations above them. So they're in two deeps, but the bottom deep has no frames in it. Bottom board is closed off with some plastic mesh material for breathability. And the top is covered with a double screen board. And then I've got the lid sitting on it cockeyed so there's airflow available. So they're locked in for two days. She'll be back Tuesday or Thursday, I mean, and she'll turn them loose on Thursday. So that's they're staying on the same yard. She's out of town. Couldn't take care of the problem and didn't want to lose her swarm so here i come to save the day <laughs> uh, we're good friends so i do that for friends anything yeah i do it for people i don't know a lot of times too so I'm not a total jerk but two days locked up and we'll shook them let them out and let them fly and take her empty box off the bottom and they'll be yeah, there's there's one that's missing a stinger dragging her guts dragging her guts all over me like i've been all over creation looking for this swarm trying to find the right address <laughs> now that i've found the right spot let me put my hand up there so you can see how big they are it's literally a handful of bees these are probably scouts they got left behind off of a swarm possibly uh, or an abscon because it's too tiny to be an actual i'm just going to shake them in the back bucket no need to vacuum there's what's left from shaking out the ones that i just got they're just clustered up from riding in the back of the truck and the wind being on them so that group <laughs> ain't much smaller than those we'll add them together and make something out of them see if there's a queen in them kind of doubt it here we go I didn't see that little bitty twig sticking through them. Here we are. We're blocking traffic. Got people checking us out. Dude, that really sucked. I'm just going to scoop up a handful of leaves and junk and throw it in the bucket and separate it later. Tempted to get a glove to do this. been a lot cleaner. That was a messy catch. Yeah, Take a quick look, make sure we're not leaving a queen behind somewhere.
No queen, just bees crawling up with pants legs. Well, that was about the tiniest swarm you could possibly hope for, but it counts. Wasn't one of mine. Got the call for it, came and got it. It counts. <laughs> got 45 mating nukes to go through uh, definitely won't get through them all today but I've placed cells in all these nukes and I need to go through and make sure they're all laying and the ones that have a at least a couple frames laid up I'm pulling the queens to go to yeah I don't know if you'll autofocus on this or not, but good larva all through there. So I'm going to pull all these queens. This first round will be going to Travis at BYS LLC. Mm -hmm. These are all newly mated Italian queens. In the second round, I'm going to run one more round of queens through them. Second round is probably going to be the Randy Queen that you saw in the Spanish language video and he'll probably get those too. We'll see what he needs. Just depends on his needs. These are not quite as far along as I thought they would be. I thought they would have cat brood by now. We've been gone for several days to Texas and I was kind of worried about getting back to them in time but looks like looks like I'm all right they do have a good amount of larvae in them but no cap brood so some of them got two cells which this is one of them and some of them got one So they look they look good. They're they have plenty laid. I just wish they were a little further along. 
because there's not a heck of a lot of bees in here. So I'm going to reduce the box by a frame. They're not working. They're only working three and a half frames anyway, so if I take a frame from them, it ain't going to hurt anything right now. The only good thing about having so few bees in the box is it's going to make it easy to find the queens. I think those late cold snaps we had slowed us down quite a bit. I know it slowed the the uh, food sources down. It burned everything real bad. Uh, it's the first time I've ever seen the live oaks burned. Popcorn trees, which is one of our is our main flow in the summer. Uh, a lot of those are just completely burned up. I hope they'll come back, but it's an invasive species, so a lot of people are glad to see them burn up. But uh, I think that slowed down my queens getting mated. I would have gone through them a week ago expecting to pull them, but I just didn't have time. So I thought, shoot, man, these boxes are going to be busting at the seams, but they're not. So that's good and bad. It's good right now. What? Yeah, they're pretty. All our little chickens are out running. So right now what I'm doing, you want to come over here. They'll get a chicken. Can you catch one? <laughs> so right now what I'm doing aside from pulling queens is I'm going to put all these nukes into pro nukes or easy nukes, whatever I've got. And I'm going to move them off this yard into the shade somewhere else. Queens will be going into the JZBZ cages for shipping. Catch one of them baby chickens and bring it. You can't catch one? <laughs> well, come over. Jake's leaving for Columbia day after tomorrow. Yeah. And I went by Verizon to add the international travel pass on his phone. Yeah. They are so stinking cute. Am I going to bother you if I mow the grass over here? Yeah. Have you mowed over where? Inside the fence by the house. Oh, uh, no, you'll be fine. I was going to push mow. Okay, you'll be fine. Okay. Just, uh, if I do, if it does bother you, just uh, call my phone and I'll feel it buzzing on my arm, okay? The bees will let you know before I will. Well, they usually don't fuss about me mowing over there with the push mower. Right? Yeah, I don't think they'll bother you. Well, I don't want to mess up your video. Queen, I think, is either on this frame or in this box because that box and those two frames over there just got loud. Well, daggone, eh? But three and a half frames of bees on it. We know we got a layer in here and I'm having trouble finding her. <laughs> there's hardly any. I mean, there's a good amount of bees in here, but she's hiding. I bet you she's in the box. Just tell a bunch of them on the walls in the box. I, want, I don't want to keep them out too long. It's only 70 degrees. I don't want to chill that brood. There's a good frame full of bees in the box just hanging out on the walls. You don't want to have me look for her. see her. Old girl's a good hider. I'll let them walk across the box. She usually, if they walk, she'll stand out pretty much. If she's in here, she may not even be in here. I might have just overlooked her on the frame. And right now I'm thinking I probably did. There she is, she's a dark one. I, have, I always have trouble locating these dark queens. I always have trouble with those. Put her in the cage. 
sometimes they're hard to put in frontwards. I grab the edges of the cage like a cat. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing going in backwards. So sometimes when I can't get a grip on them without damaging them, I'm scared I'm gonna damage them. I'll just put her loosely in my hand like that and just let her walk in the cage. And then I'll put some attendants in with her. You always want your attendants to be out of her hive. You put attendants out of another hive, sometimes they'll kill her. And basically, I'm not looking for anything in particular other than not old bees. You don't want any old, dark, wore out looking bees. Put four in there with her. I don't have a candy plug, so I'm just putting caps on them. You know what, just so I'm not having track frames everywhere, I'm gonna put that frame right back in there, but I'm gonna swap sides. They weren't touching it on that side, I'll swap sides. And uh, this box will stay closed up right here until dark, or I mean it'll stay open right here until dark so I can collect all the foragers because like I say, the numbers aren't great in this. It's only 72 high today. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put her right there and I'll just come back through and pop lids and pull queens. So, so with a high of 72 today, I'm not too worried about them overheating. It's also really overcast, sun's in and out, not out very much. This is my first time to use this good camera in a long time, so I'm not certain what the minimum focus distance is. So. Hopefully, I'm not just a blurry blob or just blurry, I'm already a blob. These have all been out of the hive. There was no cat brood left in there, so they all know where to go. So basically, I'm just gonna put them in the air and let them go back. You don't have to, don't have to necessarily shake them out like that, but I want them back in the hive because these are in here trying to guard hive beetles in these corners and they don't need to guard this box anymore because I'm eliminating this box. Each one of these boxes is alternating entrance directions. So these two are facing the front, this one's facing the back. So I'm having to swap around to this side for an inspection on this one. This is another uh, dual cell. Some of these cells didn't take and we had to had to redo them, but all these cells have been cleaned out. Some of them did take and ended up just like in nature. Double queen, multiple queen. You know, in nature they usually got way more than two. We haven't touched these new frames. Yeah, they're nowhere near long, as far along as I thought they were going to be. And these are factory wax frames. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull all them and add some wax to them because they're they don't have the bees to work them right now. But when they do get the bees to work them, I want them to be able to pull them out nice and even and not have burr comb all over them. Really nice looking pollen frame. Super nice right there. Good little bit on the back of it, good nectar, nice nectar honey ring. So I haven't checked any of these to see if they're laying yet. But when I see something like that, it looks like they're preparing, preparing for a queen to be laying and they're not just doing busy work or whatever. I'm almost certain that they are and this one definitely is. Got a lot of good brood in there. Got some young bucks coming up. Young drones, there's our queen down here. Just casually working away. 
We'll catch her, put her in a in a cage. Since I don't know if that was focusing earlier, I'll tell you what, I'll just put her, this is what I usually do, I just put her inside the cage like that, block her with my finger, turn it over so she's going up top. I gotta be careful not to catch her legs, so I'm waiting until she's away from the doors before I snap them shut, because I don't want to damage her. So now that I got her in there, I can pick the stingers out of my fingers. It's only one, really. And then I can go get some attendance for her. Mm -hmm. Alright, a couple quick tips. Take my belt off. Take my belt loose. I got one of these uh, Amish Leatherworks. It's supposed to be a hive tool holster. It's a great idea and it looks good. It's quality, but it doesn't hold well enough. A little bump on that and your hive tool just falls on the ground. So I thought maybe uh, since that's stainless, maybe it wasn't, maybe it's the metal. So I tried this one and it's the same way. This one's even just because of the weight of the tool. And of course, you know, belt runs here. My belly or my side is sticking out right here. so any movement lateral is doing this and pushing the hive tool loose and it just falls on the ground so maybe for a skinny guy with a, a flat very lightweight hive tool it feels like when you're holding it like this you're like oh that's pretty tight but when you start moving around and your belt is doing this it doesn't hold so uh fail my opinion uh, I did buy that. It's not sponsored. Also, some of our beekeepers to the north, we don't have sweet gum down this far south, really. Not enough to to speak of, but when they're transporting their nukes, and they've got the drilled holes, and they want to close them, these are all screen bottom nukes. So when they want to close them up, the feeder hole and the lid and the entrance hole are both the same size. They look like probably a three quarter, one inch hole, I'm not sure, but they just jam a sweet gum ball in it and it holds it. Holds it really well. But sometimes they stick them in a little too far and you gotta work to get them out. So what I've figured out is a good tool to grab them to get them out is this frame grip. Grabs them pretty good. And so, <laughs> I mean, they jam, they jam them in there. Sometimes you got to dig, a, dig them out with a pocket knife or a screwdriver. But that frame grip tool just grabs them and pulls them right out really easy. So there's a couple of tools. No. Yes, I use this quite a bit. Even though this is made for plastic frames. I've got a flat blade one from Kelly that's made for wooden frames. But I use this one more. Partially because it's got a pry tool on it. But also... Even though it digs into the wood, you get a good positive grip on it. Yeah, and the other one does too, but this, this one just not really any chance of slipping unless you just let go. Now that I'm done dinking around with the camera, I'm going to put the camera up and get to work and see if I can get some actual work done. So I hope y'all enjoyed that. And I got to go back to work. This is a neat one. This is a neat study. Uh, I work in the field of mental health, uh, is what I do. And honey has been shown to protect the brain. And then that's something that we all want, especially in the age where uh, I don't know how many of y'all worry about things like Alzheimer's and things like that, but it's, it's always a concern of mine, especially where I work. But honey may have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties that can benefit the brain. An animal study found that rats that consumed honey had protection against brain damage caused by exposure to lead. Uh, raw honey may cont uh, contain ingredients that help fight inflammation in the hippocampus, which is the part of our brain where memory is stored. Okay, so we talked about the good parts of honey. Let's, uh, a couple of negatives here. Uh, first, uh, food poisoning. 
uh, raw honey, uh, and all of y'all have seen this on your honey bottles. I don't know if y'all put that on your honey bottles, but you should. If you're under one, it's not a good thing for babies to have. Do y'all know why? Botulism. Exactly, botulism. Yeah. Kids over one have enough uh, immunity in their system that they can fight it all. But infants under one, they don't have that yet. So it, it is dangerous to uh, little kids. So that's one possible side effect. Usually adults, they don't have this issue. And, and kids over three and four don't have it, but little babies don't need it. And rhododendrons, I know this is a controversial topic when I talked about this in Poplarville a few weeks ago. They're like, oh, azaleas aren't a problem around here. Y'all judge that on what you want to. What I'm going to tell you, though, is that Roman soldiers used azalea honey to give to their enemies to uh, <laughs> poison them. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the Romans weren't necessarily nice folks all the time, right? Mm. Besides uh, crucifying our Christ, they did a lot of other stuff. Yeah. So, um, what we do is we wait until the uh, azaleas are done before we put our honey supers on. It's not, not a huge deal because azaleas down on the coast only last about, what, two, three weeks? And the rest of the time it's just a big bush. All right, so everybody knows what propolis is. Don't have to give the uh, lesson on how that is used, but let me give you a little history on it. Let's talk about what the word actually means, propolis. It's Greek. It was LaRue's study back in college. Pro means before, right? And polis means in sit the city. So propolis actually means in defense of the city. And if you think about the bees, that's their beehive is what it's in defense for. So the propolis, of course, you know, seals up all the cracks and stuff like that. But y'all, it is gold. It is gold because of how that they get it and what it is. Um, it, uh, of course, uh, let me see, the composition of propolis is 50% tree resins, 30% waxes, 10% essential oils, 5% pollen, and 5% plant debris. Um, you know, fantastic stuff. There was a um, guy named Pliny the Elder who had this quote, and it's a little quote, so, so I just want to say this. Uh, and by the way, this is, he says uh, he was born in 23 AD, so he is a contemporary of Jesus. Okay, he was like 11 when Jesus was crucified. So to me, it, it's, it's kind of weird thinking of anybody who's a contemporary of Jesus. But this guy was Pliny the Elder. In fact, he was Roman, so he probably heard the news and everything. Uh, he said, propolis has the property of extracting stings and all foreign bodies from the flesh, dispersing tumors, ripening in, in durations. I had to look up that word. I didn't know that word. That word means an increase in the fibrous elements and tissue commonly associated with inflammation. Think about sclerosis. That's, that's what it is, okay? Allaying pains of the sinews and cytotrizing, that's a fancy word for healing by scars, ulcers of the most obstinate nature. So Pliny the Elder knew that uh, around 30 AD. So that's, uh, that's pretty amazing. Researchers have identified more than 300 compounds in propolis. The majority of these compounds are in forms of polyphenols. Polyphenols are antioxidants that fight disease and damage in the body. Propolis uh, contains polyphenols called flavonoids. And flavonoids are produced in plants as a form of protection. When you think about all the good things that, that the doctors say are good for you, green tea, fruit, vegetables, red wine, they all have flavonoids in them. Mm -hmm. They all have flavonoids in them. Okay, so propolis is thought to have antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory properties. That's a lot of antis. And that's all propolis. Um, when I got a 14-year-old, first year in high school. When she was about two or three years old, the doctor prescribed this little bottle for her for a little skin infection that she had. Now, that was 12 years ago. We didn't have any clue in the world that we were ever going to be into bees, but for some reason, we kept this bottle. Sticky as anything. And Bob and I made a bunch of uh, the tincture. Uh, he just bottled this yesterday yesterday. Um, 
by getting our propolis, freezing it, crushing it, and then letting it sit with a clear grain alcohol for, we actually let it sit for two weeks. And then uh, we poured it in two ounce, or one ounce bottles. What all can it do? I'm glad you asked. My preacher says that all the time. I'm glad you asked. Uh, wound healing. Propolis has special compounds called, oh, this is a word, pinocembrum, a flavonoid that acts as an antifungal. These anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial properties make propolis helpful in wound healing. Topical propyl, propolis alcohol extract was more effective than a steroid cream in reducing mast cells and oral surgery wounds. Mast cells are associated with inflammation and slow wound healing. Burn treatment. Um, I remember when I was in college, I, I got a pretty significant burn when I worked at uh, Gulf Shore Baptist Assembly, dumped five gallons of coffee on myself. And my dad got me, uh, again, he was a retired pharmacist, that silver sulfa diazine. Silver <laughs> There you go. And I had to, like, put that on myself all the time. And it shows that propolis is actually just as effective as that. My dad would have loved this stuff, y'all. <laughs> my dad, he, he, he might have been a pharmacist, but he was a country boy at heart, wasn't he, Lauren? Big time. And if he would have known that we were into something that was nature, he would have been all over it. Um, so just the, just as effective on burns as that silver, say that word again for me? Silver day. There you go. Gastrointestinal disorders. A study in the journal Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine suggests propolis can help treat gastrointestinal disorders, including ulcerative colitis, gastrointestinal cancers, and ulcers. Components of propolis have been shown to effectively eliminate pathogens, including H. pyori, and the research, however, is limited to animal studies and cell cultures. Cold sores and genital herpes. Ointments that contain 3% propolis and, and you can see stuff like this over the, over the counter, uh, like Herstat and Cold Sore FX. And if you even look at this one, it, it even lists right there that it has propolis in it, see? Right there. Uh, so one study from the University of Medical Sciences in Poland found when tropical, topical, not tropical, topical propolis was applied three times a day, it helped to heal cold sores faster than no treatment. The researchers found the propolis cream not only reduced the amount of herpes virus present in a person's body, but also protected the body against future cold sore breakouts. So pretty cool. Cavity control. Um, propolis may help fight cavities, a study from biological and pharmaceutical bulletin shows. In lab research, scientists found that components in propolis help inhabit the growth of Staphylococcus mutans, which is the bacteria uh, that contributes to cavities. The study suggests that propolis may also help stop Streptococcus mutants from sticking to the teeth. In fact, I, I have several uh, books that have recipes that you can use the uh, beef uh, components for, and there's actually a toothpaste recipe that you can make uh, from propolis and, and like baking soda. Um, for people that want to do that, I'm, I'm still kind of bottom two place. All right, diabetes management. <laughs> Findings from animal-based research indicates that propolis may aid in the treatment of diabe diabetes. In a study published in Pharmaceutical Research, tests on diabetic rats revealed that treatment with propolis helped lower blood sugar levels and reduce cholesterol. Um, please note that that's in rats. It hadn't been duplicated in humans yet, but I'm sure those tests are coming. And finally, cancer. Propolis has been suggested to have a role in treating certain cancers. According to a study done by San Diego State University, some of the anti-cancerous effects of propolis include keeping cancerous cells from multiplying, reducing the likelihood cells will become cancerous, and blocking pathways that keep cancer cells from signaling each other. 
Um, the study also suggests that propolis could be a complementary therapy, not the primary therapy, but it could be something that could help somebody uh, with cancer. I see it being a good partner uh, with that. Uh, okay, so y'all y'all know how you can get propolis. You scrape it off the hive. Y'all are beekeepers. I don't have to explain that. Uh, when we did this in Papa Bill, we even had the pro propolis traps and all that with us and showed. But um, making a good tincture is, I mean, that's, that's gold money right there. Um, just looking at these online, an ounce of those are about $15, $16. And it's, it helps people. And, uh, but it's pretty sticky when you make it in a bottle. 